G'day folks, uh, Sapper here with another World of Warships video. Um, today I'm going to go through a absolute nail biter. Um, let's just put it this way, it comes down to one point, and I'm not going to spoil the end. It's not much of a huge carry or anything, but I did the play right. So, I'm playing the uh, Gulio Cesare, which I hope I pronounced correctly. However, um, I'm on fault line. So, fault line's a 2, 5 to 7 uh, map. And frankly, I find it really balanced. Doesn't matter what ship class or key you play. Like, there's a lot of nice ambush locations, but at the same time, if you're smart, you can kind of dodge um, any possible um, destroyer ambushes and things like that. Um, yeah, so, love this map. Um, and as you can see, I'm heading towards A, and I pretty much always head A or C. Um, if I head C, ten, unless like I'm playing like a brawler destroyer or something like that, I'll just sit around the mouth because I just want to provide support. However, other than that, I just pretty much head to A because, let's be honest, um, B's out in the open and you're just going to get wailed on. Um, like... In graphic design, videography, photography, and stuff like that, Warships has rules. Um, there are rules in any map that you play. And uh, Fault Line, one of the rules is don't go B. However, once you know the rules, you can break them. And while I don't do it in this match, um, there are times where you can sneak into B and get the cap. Um, so as you can see, a couple of carriers per side, I wasn't overly enthusiastic about this. Um, however, the GC's got pretty good uh, AA. I just don't spec for it. Um, I think this is a 15 or 16 point captain. Off the top of my head, maybe 15. Um, I think I've gone Adrenaline Rush and Expert Marksman and then gone um, Basics of Survivability maybe. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to double check. Um, and as you can see, I'm getting constantly like spotted by the uh, enemy aircraft carriers. And I have a look around, and that's when I notice the Normandies uh, launched some shots my way. Now, I thought that that would be AP, but no, he fired HE. So, outside, to be honest, outside the Royal Navy battleships, I don't understand why you would fire HE from any range. Um, I think the only exception to that would be if you're playing something with a small caliber like the Sharnorst. Um, AP on Battleship is just, it's just the way to go. And uh, there's no indications that they're going to fix the over-penetration um, mechanics on destroyers anytime soon. They always hint at it, but it uh, never seems to happen. Um, and as I'm heading to A, you can see I'm sort of tracking that Acasta. Um, there's the mechs. I think... I think I just sort of thought there, hey, I might be able to get some good shots on the new mechs. Um, I thought my aim was pretty good. I don't know if it was dispersion or if, you know, just uh, he, he veered a little bit. But uh, subsequently, I copped some incoming fire. Now, the main reason I did actually fire against that new mechs is the fact that I keep getting spotted by the enemy carriers anyway. So, I mean, if you're spotted, might as well have a slug. Now I'm looking at the uh, layout of both teams and I kind of see it C, yeah, they've pretty much got that. We've got a double destroyer and an ML in C. So if our ships over there kind of rush it, then they're probably going to end up getting wailed on. The um, biggest issue I've noticed at um, our side at A is that we've lost a couple of destroyers and we've only really got a Pensacola, Fuso and New Max. And to be honest, the Fuso and New Max with their speed are horribly out of position. So I'm kind of looking at this going and I'm approaching the cap here and I'm like, okay, there's that Acasta so thrown torps my way. So basically I cut engine speed and angle away. And the reason to do that is just to throw off the, um, the predictive lines for the Acasta and make sure that his torps are going to miss. Or if they do hit, I only cop really like one at worst. Uh, when you're playing against a double carrier combo, you've got to be hyper sensitive to destroyer torpedoes. Because, I mean, if 
you get some destroyer torpedoes that are going to hit you and then the carrier stacks and cross drops on top of that you're in a world of hurt and trust me there's a little bit of this later on the uh big thing here though is that the uh, our, my teammates are actually looking like they're going to head into a so i'm happy to go in and be the armored spearhead for our, our little force because we've really got to do something um if you look over towards uh charlie at the moment yeah <laughs> We've got no caps, we need to do something about it. And that's when I spot the Ober and wake one of the few mistakes I make this game. I didn't account for the turn away. And he had actually started it when I fired. Um, so I should have aimed a little higher. Ended up getting an overpin and a couple of bounces. And now all of the fire starts coming in. And you'll notice I... Very carefully use WAS tacks and very carefully angle my ship to provide the maximum angle to all the enemy ships that are, that are approaching. There's... Oh! There's the uh, caster torps. Um, the biggest thing I'm going to have to worry about here is a big CV drop coming right on top of me. Thankfully the Pensacola's... Um, I think he activated defensive fire and I start turning in and uh, accelerating as I do. However, this is not looking pretty because there's also some torps coming in from the uh, Aoba earlier, I'm guessing. And, you know, I'm not a scrub, so I hold my repair while all the uh, torpedoes are coming in. Keeping in mind that I've, I've watched... Okay, yep, okay. A caster's fire torps, so I don't have to worry about him. There's no other torps that are likely to come through, so then I use my repair and heal. And this is not looking good. Um, yes, we've pushed in together, but look at how much sustained fire I'm under, and keep in mind that I'm already at half HP, and yeah, there's no repair. And heals on cooldown as well. I find the GC to be a really hard hitter, but it can't tank. If I was to pick a tier 5 battleship to tank, um, I would not pick the GC any day of the week. Um, I've dueled Congos that have been broadside to me and I've been perfectly angled and I've lost at 10Ks. And the Congos are Battlecruiser. Alrighty, we've got a cap and it looks like the Dunkirk's going to manage to score B. Which isn't too bad, but um, he's in a bad position regardless. So, I, I'm looking here at the Dying Duke going, oh, but he's broadside and then I realise the Acasta's kind of jumped out. Like, you know what, I'm just going to shoot. I'm then going to angle towards the Acasta because I'm expecting another load of torps. Um, and I'll have to worry about him once we uh, manage to spot him. And I try and wiggle out, trying to, like, just split those torps. But I made a mistake there where, is that, where I turned a little bit too far to the right. Oh, well. If you could consider it a mistake, you could argue that I was going to cop one. But, nope, torpedo beats, nope, not happening. Lucky I saved my repair, and now I really need to drop this Acasta. Thankfully, most of the enemy has uh, started gunning down uh, my allies, and that's one of those big things, you know. If you're pushing, and you've got allies with you, it gives the enemy the opportunity to make targeting mistakes. And this is the part I love about GC. Look how this baby turns. I've got two enemy torps coming in. Yeah, I'm getting a bit of cover from our aircraft carrier, but if they had dropped me, it would have been pretty much on top of land, and it would have given my AA a bit more time to... you know, get rid of them. Still, I'm not healthy, and I'm looking at this going, okay, I'm going to have to bail out towards B, maybe try and help that Dunkirk. Um, I'm just going to get some shots off before it... Oh, this is just juicy. Look at this Aoba. Come on, baby. Dispersion be kind. Yeah, yeah. I wish he was at high health. Nah. Okay, what are we looking at? We've got Normandy, New Mexico, doing all sorts of weird stuff. Okay. So, I'm going to fang it into B and see if I can catch one of these guys out. Preferably the New Mex. Um, wipe him out, and then angle for anything else that's coming my way. 
Dunkirk's managed to get B, and... Okay, cool. We've got two cats. We're down 500-ish to 3-ish, 300-ish. Uh, I'm not liking the look of this game. It, it, to, I'll be honest, uh, the ship lineup, they've got advantage. Positioning, they've got advantage. Destroyers, they have three destroyers still in play. We have zero. Um, so I kind of look at this and I make a decision. Okay. I can either sit back and just farm some XP, or I can try and make a play and try and salvage what's pretty much a loss at the moment. And I luckily get that new mech, and the Normandy's kind of in cover, so eh. I'm looking at the Gallant and the Dunkirk, and I'm thinking, yeah, the Dunkirk should be fine. He's got, like, you know, 2x4 on the front. Um, if he loads HE, he should be able to, like, rip that Gallant to shreds. And if he plays decently, yeah, should be right. So at the moment, I'm looking at the Acasta and I'm looking at the Normandy. And that's when I kind of notice. Okay, the Gallant is getting CV support. So even though it's low HP, the chances are the Dunkirk isn't going to survive this. So I'm going to get some shots on this Normandy and then see what I can do about B. Come on. Alrighty, so, Gallant. I'm currently spotted by aircraft. I'm going to wait for my stealth to drop. And then I'm going to watch my... No, I'm still spotted by aircraft. Ah, oh, another one. Righto. I was hoping... Oh, there we go. Right, spotted by ship. Okay, so he's popped out. The, as I see it, the left-hand side of that island. So I know I need to angle towards that. I am keeping a fairly shallow angle to the right side of the island because I'm not sure if he is going to have dropped torps that side. Um, the Gallant, while not a torpedo boat, does have decent torps and I can't remember um, what time he actually fired them. Okay, yeah, I've got the Gallant now. I can look at something else. No. That's right. At six and a half Ks, shots were bang on. Dispersion. Mm. Mm. You love Iron Jesus? Come on, come on. This one should hit. Are you kidding? Um, okay, right. I'm just going to have to focus on this Gallant until I drop him. I expected both those salvos to, to rip him to shreds, and it seems like... Okay, good, finally. Okay. We've sunk an enemy destroyer. Okay, good, finally. Now, what do we got here? We've got a caster head into the CVs. I don't think I've noticed it just yet. I'm looking at the Normandy. Oh, oh, no, now I switch on. Okay, I'm going to have to turn hard. We need to do something about this Acasta. Now, I didn't have much faith in my CVs because, well, you know, tier 5 and tier 6 CVs generally aren't going to be able to drop a destroyer, but I was wrong. Now, I'm not sure if my shots would have hit, but, you know, at least I'm trying to look after them. And we're in even a bit, bit of a pickle here. I managed to get, get B again, but uh, we need A. We're still down a good 160 points. Um, we've kind of upped on the ship advantage, which is good, but our new Mex and Fuso have made one of the classic errors in, uh, in Fault Line, which is pushing into the enemy spawn. I, it's, it's the worst thing you can do. Fuso and new Mex have uh, speed in the range of the 20 knots department. Uh, new Mex, I think, is 21, and I think the Fuso from memory is about 25. Why are they down there? They're not capping. They're not supporting a cap. They're not defending a cap. We're in a world of hurt. But that's the least of our issues. I mean, I could make a rush to C, but chances are the Normandy would come and cap B. We need to get another kill to do something about the points disparity. And uh, luckily our CVs are doing something quite nice, which is they're actually capping. But you'll also notice that they've got no planes left. So, the enemy CVs have control of the sky, and given all the damage I've copped, I'm not sure how many of my AA mounts are left. So I'm going to hope to try and catch this Normandy off guard. What I'm doing is I'm taking an angle where I can fire all my guns initially, and then turn in. So see how I took it wide, I can turn in quite sharply to then angle correctly against her. She's angled, so I've aimed a little higher, and I was quite unlucky to only get one pen there. 
Ah, right, okay. You're still firing HE. Still, I can't assume you're going to keep doing that. So, I need to brawl this Normandy. And I need to win it. And it looks like he's coming for the rare. Ah, oh, how am I going to do this? I believe at the time I was thinking, okay, I've got one or two options. I can turn hard right, which he can react to. Or I can just power ahead and hope that I can dodge him at the last minute using the GC's beautiful handling. And that's exactly what I go for. Go for the dodge. I control X my turrets. Yep. Now I need to send my turrets rear. Yep, that's it. Possibly could have turned my turrets harder, but uh, I think at the time I was just more worried about um, actually dodging. And the beauty of this is that uh, I turned into the island. I went, you know what, I don't care if I beach. And subsequently forcing the CV to drop at an angle that would then miss me. Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on. Alright, so he's angled. I'm broadside to him. He's firing HE. That's right, the reason I win this brawl is he's busy firing HE. And I'm kind of looking at this going... I could fire, but it looks like he's going to show broadside. Alrighty. Let's wait for all the guns to reload. We're still 200 points down. Oh, that's better. Okay, right. Now, I should be able to get him on the way out. And I know that the CV, the next CV drops miles away. So, now I've got to accelerate. And again, he's angling away, which is fantastic. But in a brawl, you need to time your angling so that you can at least fire more than just your rear or front guns. The exception being, obviously, those uh, battleships of high tier that have uh, more percentage of their firepower at the front or even the rear in the case of the margin. And finally, I got him. Got some pens. Ah, oh, dear. Right, and I'm looking at this going, like, I have to get this cap. This, I'm not going to try and chase a Fuzo, a Ryujo, whatever the other carrier is. I think it's a Zuho. Um, thankfully, there's not many torp bombers left, and I managed to gun him down as he tried to make his approach. Um, I have to get to sea. So as soon as I wait out at this torp, I'm going to turn in, and I'm going to make my quickest way to sea, because I'm looking at this going, I don't know if I'm going to get there in time. I don't know if... Like, if, if our two caps are catch up, I, I, I don't know if the points disparity is going to happen before the timer comes out. Like, I, I, I am absolutely... I am absolutely shitting bricks, for lack of a better way to put it. I... I the, the adrenaline's pumping. I, I'm, I'm stoked that the CVs managed to cap. I mean... Even though they lost the air battle, um, our Fuso's gone. Uh, right about now, we have a ship advantage, but we have a points deficit. Like, it's... I don't know. And... It's kind of... Oh. Alrighty, hopefully we can spot something. And maybe I can get a kill and, and that'll get us over the line. But uh, I don't hold high hopes of that. Okay, no, no, mate, oh, okay. If that was a Congo, if I was playing a Congo, I would have been able to get shots on that Ryujo. And who knows, that might have turned the fight. But now we've also spotted the Zuho. Again, they're full HP. I, okay, I need two salvos and two really lucky salvos to get them. But you know what, I'm going to take a shot at the uh, Zuho anyway because, well, frankly, I've got nothing else to lose and I'm being perma-spotted by aircraft anyway. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking... Yep, that's right. Dispersion. Don't get me wrong, I don't have an issue with the GC. I think it's a very strong tier 5. But my goodness, battleship dispersion sometimes gives you a headache, eh? Okay. So, at right now, I'm thinking... Wow, where's the other battleship? So... Obviously, there's a AFK, AFK battleship here. I, honest to God, put down... Like, the way this game went for one AFK ship. And I... I don't know. I, right now, like, it's close. It's 798, 803, um, 806, 798, 806, 801, 804. It, 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. I just need to stop it for one click. It's one second left. It's one second. Oh dear. Oh dear. I can't believe we won that. I didn't even make it to the cap and we won by one point. In case you missed that, that was 8.10 to 8.09 on the timeout from a losing position. Ah, oh, love that game. Ah, oh, so much fun. Don't mind, you know, I only got 60 odd, 65k uh, damage, but I mean, what a win. Like, that, that's what you play World of Warships for. Um, I actually ended, did end up setting this um, replay into Jingles, but, um, you know, I mean, he's, he gets hundreds, probably even thousands of, of replays every few days, so... Uh, he didn't, he hasn't covered it, so there's me covering it. And, uh, yeah, well. So, post-battle screen. Um, yeah, just under 65,000 damage. Dreadnought, not surprising. Um, a cap, a whole bunch of secondary hits. Um, must have been that brawl. And um, quite a few aircraft shot down. Um, looking into team score area. Um, yeah, just under 1,500 rule. Four kills. Pretty happy with that. Um, I know there was a few sort of securing there. But uh, look at that Indy. Two kills, 29 aircraft down. I mean, I know I was criticizing him during the match, but um, he obviously did a very good job to manage to score 1,600. Unless there's some like a sur absurd modifiers uh, for capping points or something. And looking at the detailed report, yeah, there you go. Most of it armor-piercing, a few from secondaries. Um, quite a few kill securing there. New mechs, Oba, Gallant. Through that and uh, securing the cap, hey, big win. Well, kind of a minor win almost, but uh, big game. Loved it. Anyway, guys, uh, this is Sapper, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.